welcome to First Christian Church, a community of God's love and hospitality. No matter what brings you to FCC today or how you join us, no matter where you are on life's journey, you are welcomed and loved by God and this community of faith. In that spirit of welcome, you are encouraged to interact in person and on Facebook Live. Please welcome each other in the comment section or join us after church uh, for worship for, please join us after worship for coffee and conversation. Brandon is away this Sunday, but don't fear. We are in good hands. We have excellent lay leadership to uh, journey us through this uh, service. And we are also joined by the Reverend Sisa Payuyo, um, a dear friend of mine whom I've known for almost 30 years because we served on the regional uh, board of directors um, almost that long ago. <laughs> and now she is a regional staff person and a prophetic voice for anti-racism and pro-reconciliation work, both in the region and, the, and in the wider denomination. So we are very pleased to welcome you, Sisa. Today, Misan and Nelly are available for children and youth. And you will notice two tables of candles. One is up front and one is in the middle of the sanctuary. During the time of prayer, music, or really any time when you are so moved, you are welcome to come and light candles at either location. You are also encouraged to light a candle if you are joining us virtually. If you have prayer requests, comments, or questions, please use the green cards that are near the entryway or use the comment, comment section on Facebook Live. And if you don't feel comfortable using that space, please reach out to one of us, one of the leaders this morning, and we will be happy to incorporate your prayers. All are welcome at the communion table, and we will extend that welcome again later in the service. You may use the all-in-one communion cup or come forward for communion to take the bread and return uh, with the bread to your seat with the, uh, with the juice. You, we will give you the same instructions during communion. Before I invite you to stand for our opening songs, I wanted to make mention that we are also welcoming Benny Hilly as one of our music leaders this morning. And of course, we have Marina, and we are so grateful for your leadership in that respect. And the first song that we'll be singing is a, is a song called Spirit. And it's near and dear to my heart. I first learned it back when I was in seminary in the late 80s. And it turns out that it was written by a United Church of Christ minister named Jim Manley in 1975 when he was serving a church here in the Southland. He was serving San Marino Congregational Church, which happens to be the church that Warren and I were, were a part of for the 20 years before we found this church home. So there's some ties there that are happening that are just lovely to contemplate. And so it is my pleasure to invite you all to stand to join in the singing of spirit. It's number 249 in your hymnal, but the words will also be projected. Good morning, family of God.
going to be going to song 638 and doing verses 1 through 4. So I see some of you with hymnals, so I wanted to give you a little, little time to get there. This is a song called In the Bulb There is a Flower, and it is new to me, but it is quite lovely, and I think you'll see why Marina chose it when we get to the chorus. Is that right? Did I just hose everything? 638. Okay. Okay. Marina. thoughtfully enter a space of prayer with a reminder, as Kathy mentioned, to share your prayers by using the prayer cards located at the entryway. After I share a prayer from the congregation, I will say, God, in your mercy, and you are invited to respond by saying, hear our prayer. We invite you to continue this time of prayer with a simple breathing and centering exercise. Let us begin by breathing in God's gift of peace and breathe out. Let us continue by breathing in God's gift of hope and breathe out. Finally, let us breathe in God's gift of love. and breathe out. We give thanks for this community of faith that continues to commit itself to God's love and hospitality. 
In the same light, we give thanks for all our partners in ministry like Home Again LA, Burbank Temporary Aid Center, Homemade Thursdays, Project Mercy, Burbank Armenian Association, LA Voice, Green Chalice, Burbank Pride, and Week of Compassion. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We are thankful for the words of Reverend Payuyo and the lay leadership of First Christian Church of Burbank. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Brandon gave me a list of prayer concerns to lift up today, and the very first one is one that involves me and Kathy. We've just returned, as, you, as some of you may know, from Texas, uh, where we were celebrating and grieving the life of Kathy's father, who, uh, who very recently died. And so um, we'd like to lift up Kathy's family at this time. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift up Caden, who celebrated his first birthday just yesterday, and all those who were able to be a part of that, and anybody who basically uh, celebrated another year of life. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all of creation, as we witness the stunning consequences of human-made climate change, we also give thanks for the continual reminders of beauty in creation that constantly surround all of us. God, in your mercy. For those in our community who are facing ongoing issues, medical, family issues, and personal struggles, including Sarah, Shirley, Cindy, Janine, Janet, Carlos, Diane, Jan's brother, Dennis, Benny, Gina, and Forrest. God, in your mercy. In the wake of the ever-changing political landscape, we pray for hope, justice, and inclusion to persist. God, in your mercy. For those communities experiencing extreme heat, hurricanes, flooding, and other natural disasters, Further, in the midst of these disasters, we pray for firefighters and first responders. God, in your mercy. For the unemployed and underemployed, including Jan's son and others who are looking for more sustainable and just working conditions. God, in your mercy. Your mercy. We also continue to pray for peace in Palestine, Lebanon, the wider Middle East, Armenia, Ukraine, Congo, Sudan, Haiti, and all those struggling with violence due to war all over the world. God, in your mercy. Sure. For those communities experiencing an, an increase in hateful rhetoric and violence due to racism, homophobia, and sexism. God, in your mercy. Sure. For those struggling with addiction in its many forms and for those who love them. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Again, we return to a prayer for thanksgiving for this community of faith. May we continue to commit ourselves to God's justice, shalom, and an all-inclusive understanding of love. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. And finally, for any unuttered requests, we lift these up. And we ask that God, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
afflictions and despair. Who will lift the olive branches? Who will light the flames of care? God of rainbow, fiery pillar, leading where the eagles soar. We, your people, ours the journey. Let us continue in prayer. God of grace, the experience of your presence and sweeping love is a reason enough to give thanks this morning. It's in the quick hug, the visitor who arrives and sits in the back pew, musicians who thoughtfully sing and play music, children who giggle in the back of the sanctuary, and volunteers who bustle around ensuring a spirit of welcome, all of which remind of your amazing grace. Yet this is also a time in which we name and lament the realities of the world in which we live. For hunger, grief, trauma, chaos, violence, war, thirst, oppression. God of power and empowerment, you heard our prayers this morning. For your abiding and loving presence we give thanks as you surround our lives and this world with that presence. We trust that you fully know those prayers we are unable to articulate, holding our joy, despair, excitement, questions, and thanksgivings, intention, and love. God of grace and future glory, may our prayers become collective action, and in the words of St. Francis of Assisi, Make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. This we pray in the mystery of the sacred time and place we gather. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Today's scripture comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through 27. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we are all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members of the, in the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are mem many members of yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor. 
and our less respectable members are treated with greater respect. Whereas our more respectable members do not need this, but God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member. If there be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another, if one member suffers, all will suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all will rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Well, good morning, church. Good morning, all of you. I'm so happy to be here. Always a humble blessing to be asked by your pastor, Pastor Brandon, to, to come and, and be with you all. And so my heart is really full of joy today. Mariana, thank you so much. Mar Marina, thank you for your beautiful music. Benny, thank you for your leading. It's been a while. It we has. haven't seen each other. Benny and I have known each other for almost 20 years, and so it's so good to see you. Um, I'm just so happy to be here with you all this morning. Let's pray. God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to you. My God, my rock, my redeemer, amen. So as we hear these words from Paul, we are coming into this ongoing conversation that was started long before these letters to the church in Corinth were established. First Corinthians is structured in a way that um, it talks about the mending of the body, glorifying God in the body, gathering as the body of Christ and affirming the resurrection of the body. Now, the um, Corinthian Christians found themselves divided at this time along the lines of authority. If we read earlier in this chapter, they're arguing about, well, I was baptized by Paul. You know, I was baptized by Jesus. I belong to Cephas. You know, so they were all kind of rout, taking sides against each other, um, saying who had the most authority. And um, Paul is addressing this. Also, the idea of human importance. You know, um, it says. In verse 27, God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is lowly and despised in the world, things that are not to reduce to nothing, things that are, so that no one might boast in the presence of God. So they're talking about who is more important. People were at that time were talking about who is more important than the other. But Paul tells him in many different ways how we're all important to God, whether no, no matter what our state in life is. There were economic differences and religious differences as well, but Paul advocated for a unity patterned after the sacrifice of Christ. And Paul reminds the Corinthians of their in intrinsic connection to the body of Christ. We're all united, we're all together. And he just says this in so many different ways. Um, he, he talks about how, well, before I do that, what was also going on at that time um, in Corinth was that there was a very large cultural value on freedom in the city because there was a large number of freed slaves that were that came from throughout the Roman Empire and settled in Corinth. 
So the idea of freedom and liberty were very, very, people were very passionate about that. But Paul helps to put it in the framework of freedom in Christ, not freedom from certain idolatries, but freedom in Christ. Um, before this passage, Paul talks about the different gifts of the Spirit, that each of the gifts of the Spirit are important. Um, the, the gift of miracles or prophecy or discerning the spirits or, or um, interpretation of, of tongues. Each, each spirit is just as important as, as the other. And then he takes it and puts it in the idea of language, an idea of the body, that each part of the body is so important. We can't, well, today we can <laughs> with technology, that we can have a device that will help pump our heart or you know, help pump our lungs. But they're th talking about you can't, the eye is not as, as any less important or we can't all be the eye, we can't all be the ear. We each have a unique gift and a unique purpose that helps in this larger community. My first time to lead camp, summer camp at Lock 11, we were looking at the scripture and I, I tell the kids the story and I think some of them told their parents, but let me share it with you. So the body was having a conversation with itself and the, long, the heart was saying, I'm the most important thing in this body. Without me, you can't, none of you can't function. And the lungs were saying the same things. I'm so important because I help this body breathe. And all the other parts of the body said, well, I'm important because I help you hear. And the eyes are saying, I'm so important when I help you see. And this little voice, way down there, says, I may be a little butthole, but I'm just as important, because without me, you won't be able to live. <laughs> so the kids were saying for the rest of the camp, my butthole's important. <laughs> But they got it, they got it. They got that every part of their body is just as important as the rest of our body. At this summer, Misan and I went to North American Pacific Asian Disciples Convocation. And it was where all of the Asian American churches that are part of Disciples come together and we celebrate us as part of the body of Christ. We celebrate us as part of the church. We celebrate our history and our contributions into the disciples. And there was a meal that we had, Misan was there as well as so many of my other friends that um, some people put together, we, they rented an Airbnb before the convocation started and they all came together and they all uh, cooked together and one person made this amazing Samoan noodle dish. And then one of our other friends took the whole table and spread out all the ingredients on the table. And there were all the ingredients for a spring roll. So there was this, the rice paper wrapper, which was solid, but at the same time, it was transparent. And once that it was moistened in water, it would span, expand. And around the table, there was lettuce and sprouts and um, shrimp and lean beef and, um, did I say sprouts? Sprouts and, and noodles and um, peanut sauce and chili sauce and just all kinds of ingredients. And she taught us that you can put as much as you want into this on your moistened rice wrapper and then you wrap it all together and you dip it in the sauce and you eat it. 
and my mind was blown. I was like, oh my gosh, this tastes so good. And at the same time, I had this revelation, if you would, and I call it spring roll theology. <laughs> because we need the lettuce, we need the carrots, we need the lean beef, we need the, we need the shrimp. We even can put in barbecued brisket if we wanted to, or a little bit of mac and cheese and wrap it all up in this expansive wrapper of the spirit that just holds us all together and makes us a delicious community together. Now, this spring roll doesn't make itself. I need to reach across the table and say, I need you. I need you. You need me. And it's the same way that we can be in community where I say to my, my Muslim siblings, I need you. I can say to my Jewish friends, I need you. I can say to people from across the United States, whether it's Memphis or, or North Carolina or Texas or Minnesota or North, Northern California, I need you in my life to remind me, to remind each other of the beauty of God's creation, of the, of the flaws that we have as humanity, of the hope that we have as humanity, that if we are wrapped together in the arms of Christ, if we are wrapped together in the arms of God, we can make just a beautiful, beautiful community together that feeds each and every one of us. So we all need each other, no matter what color we are, no matter what our preferences are in the world, no matter what we call ourselves, we need each other and we need to recognize that in each other because you can't be you by yourself. You are you because of each other because of the experiences that we've had together in Christ, that because of the experience that we've had together as family, as church, as a nation. We need each other in order to grow spiritually, in order to grow emotionally, in order to grow within ourselves. So, I pray that you remember that every single part of your body is very, very important. It's very, very important. And every single person sitting in these pews are very important to you and to each other and everyone out there, no matter how hard it is sometimes to love, is important. And we need each other. Amen. In a seemingly increasingly divided world, it's even more important to remember, focus on, and even celebrate what unifies us. For me, in general, during worship, it's this table, God's table, that symbolizes that unity. And today is even more symbolic of that unity because it is World Communion Sunday. The church celebrates around the world on the first Sunday of October 
its um, commitment to and a celebration of the Lord's Supper. And it's amazing to me that this happens on a yearly basis, and I love to contemplate it when it does happen. First of all, it's special because not all Christians celebrate the Lord's Supper, also known as Eucharist, every Sunday as we do in this congregation. Some churches only have it once a month or even once a quarter. So to all come together and do it on the same day each year is pretty special. Secondly, it's World Communion Sunday, not just United States Communion Sunday. So while it's sort of mind-blowing to me to think that while Christians in El Paso, Texas, or Phoenix, Arizona, Indianapolis, Indiana, or even in flood-ravaged Asheville, North Carolina, are sharing the Lord's Supper together. It's also happening in Russia, Switzerland, Croatia, New Zealand, Israel, Ghana, and Gaza. Thirdly, on World Communion Sunday, I like to take a few minutes to let my imagination fly to what it might be like in these other places to use what the native people consider their daily bread. So the tortillas in Mexico, the baguette in France, the soda bread in Ireland, the naan in India, the injera in Ethiopia, the lavash in Armenia, and the rice wrapper in Vietnam. So today, we can think about the diversity of the body of Christ throughout the world, but also know that we are unified in celebrating God's special meal together. And let us focus on what unifies us at this table. This meal is understood in different ways and through different belief systems. You are welcome to participate regardless of what you believe about the bread, the cup, and God's presence. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you. 예수께서 잡히시던 날 밤에 빵을 들어, 떡을 들어, rice cake, 떡을 들어, 감사를 드리시고 떼어 제자들에게 주시며 말씀하셨습니다. This bread is my body that is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Kastame ti kalpasan ti rabii nala ni Jesus ti kopa ket kunana. In the same like manner, Jesus took the cup and said, This cup is the new covenant. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. You are invited to take this bread in an all-in-one communion cup or come forward to receive the bread and return to your seat with a cup of juice. And if you are joining us virtually, you can take the communion elements as you feel moved. Thank you. 
Please join me in Lord's Prayer. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not let us fall into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and glory forever. Amen. We come to the end of our service, but we do have announcements for this church. And I was asked to express what I know, what I feel about the blessings this church provides and the services we offer. Milton and I frequently look at each other and say, you know what, we are so blessed. We have food, we have a shelter, we have jobs. Not everybody does. And there, but for the grace of God, we could be. In the church that I was raised, we talked a lot about tithing, giving of our financial means. Sometimes to some people, it almost felt like we had to buy our place in the body of Christ. That's not so here. We certainly won't turn away your financial donations if you can share them. But there are so many ways, as we've talked about in the sermon today, to give. You know, I might be the elbow, and if I don't keep moving, the hands don't work the way they're supposed to. And so if it's just being able to show up and run rollers over bread to spread the mustard or mayonnaise or whatever to make the sandwiches, do that. Share. This church amazes me. It's so little, and yet we give so much. Let me share some of the things. Every week we have opportunities for study, reflection, and community engagement. Nearly every Wednesday is our weekly study group. The Neighborhood Walking Group, it meets at the church every Tuesday at 9 a.m. Really? Just walking? Yes, just walking gives to the body of Christ. Thursday evenings is an opportunity to check from people around the United States, share stories, and ask thoughtful questions. Homemade Thursdays is always in need of volunteers. And before I turn the time over for the rest of the announcements, let me go back to those financial donations. There are so many ways to give. There's a basket here in the church. You can give money. You can give an old-fashioned check. You can give online donations. Uh, Check the website and scan the QR code, and you'll find the ways to do that. Warren? Thanks, Lowell. We also have monthly and special one-of-a-kind type activities happening, including just yesterday morning, BTAC met for its uh, its Saturday, first Saturday of the month gathering. Uh, And I understand that the mighty group of 10 volunteers that was there uh, finished in record time packing sandwiches and creating meals for those who could benefit from them. The next opportunity for BTAC is in one month on, I believe, November the 2nd. And of course, my phone has now gone into sleep mode. There we go. (laughs) Yeah, all right. Um, Next up, uh, a monthly activity that I know my wife in particular especially enjoys is the 
is the cooking class known as Cooking with Grace, formerly Cooking with Rashid, a wonderful time of fellowship and food and leftovers for those of us who uh, get to benefit and reap the rewards of that. I believe that the next Cooking with Grace class is going to be on October the 15th at 5 p.m. And uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, next Sunday after the service will be our Queer Fellowship Group and if you have any questions about that, please seek out Blake, and, and Blake will be happy to answer questions about that. I understand that this month we will not be doing our monthly hike because it's still a little warm, but I strongly suspect that next November, the third Saturday of the month, could be our first hike in a long time. So be on the lookout for announcements about that. Um, right after our service right now, and my apologies to those who are t attending this service remotely because you won't be able to participate in the awe and wonder of our coffee and conversation time, but we'll be thinking about you. So please, uh, please join us uh, immediately after the service outside for a, uh, a nice time of snacking and chatting. And uh, today, I believe our snacks are courtesy of Jen. So thank you to Jen. And anyone who um, would like to help out with that in the coming weeks and months, there's a sign-up sheet out in the lobby and see any elder who can tell you more about what's involved in that. Let's see, anything else? Um, it says the final regional discussion of Baptizing America is tonight at 6 p.m. on Zoom. Excellent. And... Uh, Yes, if you have a hammer, well, if you don't have a hammer, just show up anyway, uh, and a hammer will be provided. Um, see, see, <laughs> see Kevin after the service to learn more about our Project Mercy Home Build, which will be happening at the end of this month, a uh, trip to Tijuana on October the 26th. It's a major endeavor. We would love to have your participation and support. If, uh, if you have any, uh, any skills at all, or even if you don't have skills, but just have energy and enthusiasm, we would love to include you as part of that expedition. So if you have any questions, please ask Kevin. And are there any other announcements? I see, I see Dave back there waving his hand. I'm not sure why, why that is. You're good. Good? We're all good. Okay. Well, then, thank you very much, and uh, take care. Family of God, please stand if you are able and join us for one last song. And we actually changed it the last minute to 10,000 Reasons. So enjoy.
into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all persons. Honor all creation. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the love of God, the light of Christ, and the power and communion of that spirit be with you all. Amen.